What's up guys, it's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down some great wide receiver drills that we feel every wide receiver needs to do to improve their hands and to improve their route running. So I hope this video helps you guys out. I hope we can give you some value. But also, fellas, we are going to be coming out to 15 more states across the country this offseason for two-day-long QB and wide receiver training camp. So if you guys are local to San Francisco, Orlando, Florida, New Orleans, Charlotte, Dallas, the DMV, St. Louis, Honolulu, Boston, Cleveland, Austin, Texas, Seattle, Newark, Denver, or Los Angeles. We'd absolutely love to have you out to one of our camps. It's eight hours of training total over the course of two days. We'll have DBs out there for one-on-ones in the works. So check out that very first link below, you guys, if you're interested and would like to get some work in with myself and my staff of coaches. Let's get started. So first drill we got here is going to be a drill where you're going to be facing forward almost, and you're going to have a quarterback or somebody, a partner standing behind you with the ball. So this this is going to be working on you snapping your head around and being able to locate the ball at like maybe you're running like a 10 yard out route maybe you're running like a post route and that quarterback's getting that thing out quick so as soon as the quarterback lets go of the ball that is when you are going to turn your head so the goal is to not cheat this thing but when you turn your head you have to locate the ball find the ball with your eyes and then obviously pull this thing in for the catch so you're going to be standing looking over your right shoulder locating the ball that's what we're looking at as soon as you see the quarterback not start to throw as soon as you see him let go of the ball that is when you want to snap your head around and this QB is going to be putting the ball on the opposite shoulder so like I said this helps you guys whipping your head around at the top of the break this helps you guys catching that ball because like from a quarterback perspective fellas if we're running like a 10 yard out from the slot and you got a QB right here he is throwing that thing before you are looking so we have to get comfortable with this we have to get comfortable snapping my head around and being able to locate the ball in the air so you see how I snap my head around I find this thing it's very important that the guy who's throwing you the ball does not put that ball at the same spot every time where you can guess he puts it high he puts it right in the middle sometimes he puts it low so we have to train our eyes and we have to locate this ball every single time so what i would say to do is you could start out with maybe about 10 to 12 reps where you start looking over the right shoulder and then snap your head to the left shoulder and then 10 to 12 reps going vice versa so i'm going to play this thing full speed again one more time and then we will get to the next catching drill to help you guys catch in traffic so like i said this next drill is going to help you guys with catching in traffic. So again, th there are a lot of catching drills that wide receivers can do, but when you guys are running over the middle and you guys have defenders around, you got a guy coming down who's going to lay a hit, you got a guy right on your hip, it is very important that you are late with your hands. So what do I mean by that? I mean that you don't want to show your hands too early. Like if the quarterback's throwing the ball to you, you don't want to extend fully with your arms because when you got a DB playing your back hip, as soon as he sees your arm extend, he's going to shoot his hands through your arms. So you have to be quote unquote late with your hands. So let's watch this drill full speed and then we'll break it down. So you need two tennis balls and you need a partner who's throwing you the ball. So I'm pumping my arms, I'm face to the side. At the last second, as soon as that ball is about to hit my hands, I drop the tennis balls and I catch the ball. That is giving yourself that kind of like late hands training, if you will, to where a, a DB on your hip, a, a linebacker coming over the top trying to knock the ball out cannot make a play. You're not giving them an indicator of when the ball is th being thrown to you. So the, that's why the tennis balls are there. When you let go of the tennis balls at the last second, it kind of retrains yourself without having to, you know, get 10 guys out there to simulate a catch in traffic. It helps you build that good habit. Now, again, fellas, it's very important that you watch this thing in with your eyes on this drill. You're not taking it for granted. Don't drop the tennis balls, obviously, too early. Try to wait for the last possible second. That ball is about to hit your hand hands and that is when you drop both of those tennis balls what i would say to do is maybe about 15 to 20 reps of this specific drill on each side to help you train that late hands let's play this thing again full speed one more time again dropping the tennis balls last possible second to look this thing in Okay, so now the next drill that we're going to be going over is a drill to work on your guys' snap down at the top of the break. So what you're going to do is you're going to need a partner right here, and you're going to be pretty much leaning into your partner. So you're you're falling forward, leaning into him, okay? So he's going to have his hands on your shoulders, and randomly, he is going to let go and let you almost fall flat on your face. And you are going to have to shoot whichever leg that we are on. I recommend doing about two sets of four reps on this. You're going to have to shoot whichever leg you're on through and snap snap down. So let's play at full speed and then I'll explain the importance of this. So he lets go and we snap. Tr almost like falling flat on your face he lets you go you have to snap to be able to catch yourself and drop your hips and bring your chin to your knee because this is the position that we want to try to get to every single time that I'm at the top of a comeback a curl a dig etc so this kind of trains yourself to do this okay so when you guys are running a route 
uh, essentially you're almost falling into the break, right? So like, let's say it's a 15 yard comeback. And when you get all the way up to 15, that's when you're trying to snap down, obviously, right? You're snapping at 15, you're dropping your hips violently and we're accelerating out of the break. Your pad level plays such an important role into that. So many wide receivers will run up and as soon as they get to 13 yards, they start to raise their chest up and they start to slow down. We call that an indicator. So when you give a DB an indicator of what you are doing, you're letting him know when you're making a break by raising up, he's going to sit right on that thing. So this kind of gets you used to using your hips to slow you down rather than raising up or simply just slowing your speed down. So again, he lets go at a random time and we have to catch myself. You should be putting all your body weight forward. So it forces you to have to snap. Now, when we drop on this specific drill, it's super important that we're not on my tippy toes and we're not on my heels. If you guys strike the ground on your heels, you're going to fall back and be off balance. If you guys strike the ground on your tippy toes, you're going to fall forward. You have to focus on having a good foot strike, middle arch of the foot, dropping your butt down and trying to bring your upper body forward, getting that chin to your knee. That's a balanced position that we want to try to get to. And this also works on that stability at the top of the break that we need. So let me play this thing again, full speed one more time. And then we're going to get to a full, like kind of more advanced variation of it. I'll play it one more time. So have your partner randomly let go. And like we said, two sets of four on each side. Okay. So now this is kind of like the next step up, if you will, of this specific drill. And this is like a high knee um, snap fall. That's what I call that last drill is like a snap fall. Um, this is like a high knee version of this. And you're going to be working not only the first like trigger step, but also like the steps that proceed after that. So you see here in this example, I'm giving high knees, hands on the shoulder, and he lets you go. And you have to catch yourself and balance in a certain position. So when you guys are going here, it's very important that you are pumping your arms and you're actually running fast with your feet, trying to get as many reps in as you can with that high knee. And like I said, leaning forward. Forward, almost putting all your body weight into it because that simulates what you're going to have to do at an actual full route. When you're running a full route, you're going to have to push vertical. You're going to have to sell. You're going to or sell the route. You're going to have to sell the fade. And that's what we're trying to replicate here. So when we have my hands and my feet pumping and I'm leaning forward and he lets go at a random time, it's going to feel like I'm going to fall flat on my face. So rather than just snapping down with one step, like on the last drill, you're going to go one snap. That's your trigger step. Two, second step. This works on you getting low at the break point, but also staying low at the break point. Because what a lot of people will do on routes is like, let's say for example, you know, I'm right here. Let's say the receiver's here, DB's inside shade. And let's say I'm running like a dig and I push up vertical. DB's running with me and I got to snap down and slip under him. A lot of guys, when they snap down, they'll drop their hips, but then they pop up right after. They don't stay low. They get low, but then they don't stay low. They pop up. And when you pop up, you drift. When you're not in a low explosive pad level position, you end up drifting on the play. So this kind of focuses on that. You're selling vertical. You're in a good pad level position, randomly lets you go. We snap down, but we stay low because this is what will help me make a tight cut, dropping your butt down and bringing your chin to your knee. So you see how when I stepped on this, I went here, I went left, then right. I would say you want to try to get about two sets of five reps going left, right, and then two sets of five reps where you go right, left on this kind of more so advanced version of that snap fall drill. Let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. Again, make sure running full speed and we're letting my hips slow me down. Okay, so this last drill here is um, going to be for catching over the shoulder. So uh, same idea is like that catch in traffic, right? When you're running over the middle, you're catching in traffic. What do you want to do with your hands? Do you want to be early or do you want to be late with your hands? You obviously want to be late with your hands. You don't want to give that DB time to be able to make a play on it. So same thing over the shoulder. When you have a ball that's thrown with some touch and they're dropping it right in the bucket and you got a DB right on your hip, you can't show your hands too early, especially when that DB is not looking back playing the ball. He's playing up. So you have to be late. So what we're going to do right here is this is a drill where you're going to throw the ball. You need a partner to toss this thing over the shoulder. And as soon as you see that ball like start to descend, not when the quarterback lets go of it, as soon as you see it start to descend and come down, you're going to clap your hands twice behind your back and then find the ball. So it's a way of being late with your hands. It also serves as like a distraction as if a DB is kind of grabbing at your arm and you have to trust your eyes with the catch. So let's play at full speed. So it tosses it over the 
the shoulder and then we clap twice behind my hands and it could be like a quick clap it almost looks like i do one clap right here but it's a quick clap of the hands i get it on the second one a little bit late on the fingertips but still it's a quick clap you don't need to do like one clap two clap it's it's as quick as we can with two claps as soon as we see the nose of the football start to come down because now when i catch that ball rather than me showing my hands right here and going too early i have to clap twice and I'm late with the hands. That doesn't give the DB time to react. When that DB is on your hip and that's the last possible second you show those hands, obviously we would prefer it to be a little bit more in front of us with this, that he has no chance to make a play. We're not giving him enough time to make a play. So we just have to catch it, put that thing away and put it to the tuck quickly and the DB will have no chance. This is a way to finish the play. This drill helps you guys finish those long routes because every wide receiver can get open. I'm confident in that, but DBs who have great recovery speed, DBs who have tight coverage, you're going to be put in these situations where we have to finish the play by being late with my hands. And that's exactly what this drill works on. So again, tosses the ball as soon as you see it on the way down. Clap those hands behind your back twice. Okay, let's play this thing again full speed. I would say you want to work maybe about 10 to 12 reps of that on each side. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, if you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. We always appreciate the feedback. It's uh, always great to hear from you guys as usual. And again, fellas, we are coming out to 15 more states across the country for two-day long QB and wide receiver training camps. So if you guys are local to any one of these cities, we would love to have you out to one of our camps. Check out that very first link in the description below if you're interested. I'll see you guys next time.